Welcome back to the Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to be answering question number four from the January 2023 Statistics S1 uh, paper from International A-Level at Excel. This question here is about Venn diagrams and probability. So 4.1 says in the Venn diagram below, A and B represent events P, Q, R and S. Uh, a and B represent, represent events, sorry, and P, Q, R, and S are probabilities. They've told us the probability of the event A is 7 over 25, so that whole circle there, and the probability of the event B, which is the whole circle here, is 1 fifth, and then the probability of A intersection B complement, which is this, this there, okay, which is, let's put it in there, that's A intersection, no, Sorry, the other way around. A in section B complement must must be in A and outside of B, so that's P. Union with A intersection B, A complement in section B, so it's outside of A but inside of B, that's that part there. So P plus R is equal to A over 25. So they've given us that information there, which we're going to deal with. Um, now, they've told us here that use algebra to show that 2P plus 2Q plus 2R equals 4 over 5. All right, so now, first of all, I know that um, the probability of A is equal to P plus Q. You have this part plus probability of that part. And I know that um, the probability of B is equal to Q plus R. And I also know that the probability of what they give us here, which is a intersection B complement union with A complement intersection B. I know that that is equal to, as we mentioned, P plus R, because A intersection B complement is this part here. Uh, sorry, is this part here. This is R. And A complement intersection B is that part here, because it means it must be inside A and outside of B at the same time. So this part is in A and outside of B, just this P part. And A complement in section B must be outside of A, but inside of B. So it must be inside B, but outside of A, so this R part. So this is basically, you could say this is basically, um, this part is P, and this is R, P plus R. Okay, so you can say that this is the same as P plus R. So we know that, therefore, that means P plus Q is equal to the probability of A, which is 7 over 25. And Q plus R is basically going to be um, the probability of B, okay. Q plus R, which is 1 fifth. And all of this, which is P plus R, we can see that that's equal to 8 over 25. So it's like we have equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. Equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. Now, if I was to add these three, three equations together, if I do equation 1 plus equation 2 plus equation 3, I'm going to have to add all these together. So I'll have P plus Q plus Q plus R plus P plus R equals, I have 7 over 25 plus 1 fifth, which is, if you multiply by 5, 5 over 25 plus 8 over 25, just to make the denominator the same. This gives you P plus P, which is 2P, plus Q plus Q, which is 2Q, plus R plus R, which is 2R. That gives me 20 over 25. So I end up with 2 plus 2P plus 2Q plus 2R equals 4 over 5. Okay, so there we have... Um, what we had to prove, okay, because this is, gives you um, four fifths as a fraction. So we've used algebra to show this. Now, what you have to be very careful about when they tell you to show something is to go through all the steps, you know, very clearly to make sure that, you know, you show all your steps and all your working, not just like, you know, write something like this down and then say, therefore, this is the answer. You have to show how you get there. Very, very important. So there's the answer to part A of question number four. Um, 
for part one. That's for part one, part A. Now we're going to go on to part B. And now for part B. So we're asked now to find the values of P, Q, and R. Uh, we have already um, determined that 2P plus 2Q plus 2R is 4 fifths. Or we were told that, in fact, in the first part of the question, we were told to show that. Now, what will help us here is understanding that P plus Q plus R is basically A union B. A union B is equal to P plus Q plus R. And we can find P plus Q plus R if we divide this by 2. You'll end up with P plus Q plus R is equal to a half of 4 fifths is 2 fifths. So we can therefore say that the probability of A union B is 2 fifths. Now that will help us find all the other probabilities that we need because, for example, for S, if we look at S, S is basically the complement of A union B. It's everything outside of A union B, so it's going to be 1 minus 2 fifths, which is 3 fifths. So we can therefore say that S is equal to 3 fifths. That's one of our answers. Now we need to find um, P, Q, and R. All right, so now, if we think about it, P is all of A union B take away the B part. So we can say P is equal to the probability of A union B take away the probability of B. So A union B is two-fifths, and the probability of B is one-fifth. That's going to give us one-fifth. So we can say that P is equal to one-fifth. So we're getting there. And similarly for R, we can do the same kind of thing. We know that R is basically um, the whole of A union B, but take away the A part. If we take away A from it, we're left with just R. So we can say that R is equal to the probability of A union B, but this time take away the probability of all of A. So that's 2 fifths minus 7 over 25. Okay, so this is going to be 10 over 25 minus 7 over 25, which is 3 over 25. So that means R is 3 over 25. So we've got R. We're now left just to find what Q is. Now, Q is the intersection between A and B. And it's basically, uh, as we know, it's the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now, we've got to take away the intersection. That will give us the probability of A union B. So we, we know that the probability of A um, union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the intersection of A, um, a and B, minus the intersection of A and B. So we know this is um, two-fifths, and we know the probability of A is um, 7 over 25, as it told us, and we know the probability of B is 1 over 25, 1 over 5, sorry, and the thing that we don't know is the intersection between A and B, which is what we're trying to find. And we know that this is basically, this is what, what Q is. This is Q. So this is our Q. So I can just write here, instead of this, I can write Q. This is Q. So that's the only unknown. So if I rearrange this, I have Q equals, add the Q to the five sides, 7 over 25 minus, this is going to be, if you um, rearrange, if you, if you, sorry, if you, um, write this in terms of a um, equivalent fraction that's going to be 10 over 25 and uh, sorry 5 over 25 sorry it's 5 over 25 and minus that's going to be 10 over 25 okay so you end up with q equals 7 plus 5 which is 12 minus 10 which is 2 over 25 so we have Q equals 2 over 25. So here we found P, Q, R, and S, which is what we were required to do. So there's an answer for question 4, part B. And now we're going to go on to 4, part C. Uh, in fact, 4, part 2. That was part 1, A and B. Now this is part 2. It says two events C and D are such that the probability of C equals X over x plus 5, and the probability d is 5 over x. So this is not related to part 1. It's a totally separate question. Where x is a positive constant, by considering p, the probability of c plus the probability of d, show that c and d cannot be mutually exclusive. 
Now, two events are mutually exclusive when there's no intersection between them. Okay, and here we're showing that they cannot be mutually exclusive. So when they're mutually exclusive, the probability of C plus the probability of, um, you can say, the probability of C union D is equal to the probability of C plus the probability of D minus the probability of A intersection, uh, sorry, C intersection D. Okay, this is the general rule, all right? If you have two things which intersect, okay, then, you know, there's going to be an intersection, and that's the intersection that you take away from the probability of C and D. So if they're mutually exclusive, if they're mutually exclusive, then what we can say is, if mutually exclusive, the probability of C intersection D is equal to zero. Okay, so therefore... The probability of C union D is this, the separate probability of C plus a probability of D added together. All right, so now, if they're mutually exclusive, then this must be true. Okay, then this must be true. All right, so now, let's take the probability of C and add to it the probability of D. In which case, you get X over X plus 5 plus 5 over X. Now, if we add these together, this is going to give us, as one fraction, um, you're going to have x times x plus 5. This will be x squared plus x times um, x plus 5. Okay? Sorry, 5 times x plus 5, what I'm talking about. Plus 5 times x plus 5. All right, now simplifying that, that gives you x squared plus 5x plus 25 over x times x plus 5. Now, how are we going to sh show? So basically, what I can do here is I can, I can, I can see that I have a x squared plus 5x, and here this is x squared plus 5x. So this is like x squared plus 5x over x squared plus 5x plus 25 over x squared plus 5x. I'm, I'm expressing this as an improper, uh, as a mixed number, right? So that I can now see this as a whole part, which is 1 plus 25 over x squared plus 5x. So I see now what we can do. We can say that, therefore, um, the probability of C plus the probability of D is equal to or is greater than 1. It's greater than 1 because we know that 25 over x squared plus 5x is greater than 0. Okay, because x is, x is um, a positive constant. It's a positive number. Okay, x is greater than 0. Okay, it's greater than or equal to 0. It's a positive number. So as x is greater than or equal to 0, uh, not equal to, just greater than 0, it's positive. So we know that x is greater than 0, as they told us in the question. x is a positive constant, x is greater than 0. Therefore, this must be greater than 0, because you've got 25 divided by something positive, it's going to be something positive. So that means, therefore, that the probability of c plus d, uh, probability of c plus the probability of d, must be greater than 1, because it's 1 plus something positive. All right, so, um, and we know that um, probability of C union D is the probability of C plus the probability of D, okay, minus zero, which is the probability of C intersection D, all right? Okay, so if mutually exclusive, Then this must be true. So therefore, you can say that C and D cannot be mutually exclusive. And the reason is because the sum of their probabilities cannot be, um, the sum of their probabilities probabilities cannot exceed 1. 
probabilities, okay, cannot exceed one. Exceed one, we might in words. Okay, because the sum of the probabilities in any situation can never be more than one, right? So if P, probability of C and probability of D, their separate probabilities exceed one, they can't be mutually exclusive. They have to be something that you take away from that to make the total probability less than one. Okay, so therefore, um, that's the reasoning for this question. Um, I hope that was clear. That concludes question number four from this um, S1 2023 January paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region here. Other questions from um, probability in S1 can be found in the um, playlist over here. This is more like probability and Venn diagrams. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. You can watch a video which shows you how to use my channel, which will appear over here. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.